Hello everyone and welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are ready to learn, so let's get started. Now the second one is a wrench. And you guys are saying, what do you, what do you mean wrench? Like, isn't that something that we, we turn a bolt with? Well, yes, that's true. That's what a wrench is. But a wrench in statics here is when our force couple system is reduced such that the resultant force and the resultant moment act in the same direction. Now you guys may be saying, Clayton, words are words. I don't know what words are. Show me a picture. Well, you got it. So let's say that we do all of our fancy math and we get that we have a resultant force and a resultant moment. What a wrench is, is when we simplify this system into the following system, where we have our force component still the same, but our moment component is now parallel with our force component. And how do we do this? Well, we simply move our force component. So we have to ask ourselves, how exactly do we determine a wrench from that initial scenario? So this is the worst possible exam question you guys can have, but it's actually not too bad once you know the procedure. So let's look at the steps on how we actually create a wrench. So remember, initially, the first thing we have to do is solve for our resultant force and our resultant moment. So this is our initial scenario where we have a moment vector and we have a force vector. Now, this is when we have to kind of think back a couple videos ago to the idea of projections. Remember that a moment component or a moment vector can be split up into a parallel and a perpendicular component. So for this particular moment vector, I can actually split it up into two separate vectors, a parallel component, which goes in the same direction as my force vector, and a perpendicular component, which goes perpendicular to my force vector. How did we do that? Well, we used dot product. So if I wanted the magnitude of that parallel component, all I'm going to do is take our, my moment vector and I'm going to dot it with the unit vector that describes the line of action of the force. So again, I put a little F there. That unit vector is the unit vector of our force vector. That's the direction we want. But keep in mind that that component is simply just a magnitude. It's not an actual vector. So all we need to do next is say, all right, I know the magnitude of this vector, but I need to actually find the vector itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the parallel and perpendicular moment component vectors. So we know if we know the magnitude of a vector, and we want it in, in the Cartesian vector notation, all we have to do is multiply it by the vector defining its direction, which is nice because if we look at this parallel vector, we know it goes in the same direction as our force vector. Therefore, the parallel component in vector form is actually just going to be the magnitude of the parallel component, which we solve for using the dot product above, multiplied by the unit vector of our force vector. So now we have m parallel as a vector. Well, how about the perpendicular components? Well, this just goes back to vector addition where our moment vector is the sum of the parallel and perpendicular components. So all we need to do in this case to find the perpendicular component is take our moment vector and subtract the parallel component. So hopefully I haven't lost you guys yet. This is again, the worst type of question. If you guys can understand this, you guys are good to go. Now at this point, all the hard work is actually done and we're basically good to go with one step remaining. So again, what we want to do now is move our force vector so that it creates the perpendicular components. Remember, if we look up at the top here, our goal is to still have that parallel component, that M, that red component. We don't want that to disappear. What we want to disappear is the perpendicular component. So we're going to do exactly what we did in the previous video, but in this particular case, we just want to move it so that the perpendicular component disappears. And we do that through the cross product. In this case, if we have a position vector from O to our new point, multiplied, or I guess crossed with our force vector, we want that to be equal to the perpendicular component. So here's the key here that distinguishes this from the previous video. In the previous video, we wanted to get rid of the entire moment. So we used M as a whole. In a wrench, we want to only get rid of the perpendicular component. So in this equation, we're only doing the perpendicular components. We are not doing the whole moment. All right, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So if we look at this particular case, the only unknown that we actually have is going to be that position vector. And we can use the same procedure that we had on the previous video to actually solve for that unknown coordinate point. 
But yeah, that's it for force reduction. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next lecture video.